Welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today we're going to talk a lot about leather, specifically about exotic leather. Now, when most people think of suede, they think of this, which is just, this is a tongue pad, and this is just a very thin piece of leather, uh, either, either on the inside or split, that has soft pile to it. But as we look at exotic leathers, the suede can have a lot of different shapes and sizes. And then there can be nubuck as well, which is very similar to shade uh, to suede, which we'll look at today. Today's all about exotics. We'll talk about quite a few of them as we go through. This is kid suede. And this is on a pair of St. Crispin's loafers. And this beautiful denim color has a, uh, a lot of character and um, just a, a lot of uh, ways. It's a long suede and feels like cashmere. Surprise, surprise, because it's from a goat um, and uh, is very, very soft to the touch. Now, these are lined, unstructured uh, loafers, but um, be, you don't feel it on the inside. And if you were to be able to look at it on the inside, um, because of the quality of the shoe, you would see the smooth leather on the inside. That's part of what you get with high quality suede. Now, in a non super high quality suede would be like this one, which is, as you can see, the pile is high, but it's not really as, as elegant. And this is, um, you can see really from the sole is different too. This is an Allen Edmonds Wilder, which is uh, one of their um, made in India selections. It's actually Blake stitched, which you can see on the inside there, but is, um, overall, I mean, this is kudu and it is unlined, so you can see the smooth um, leather underneath. Um, and it's very nice, it holds up okay, but I don't really like it because it has this insole and the insole sinks and changes the fit of the shoe considerably over time, as well as um, uh, just being kind of icky to walk on. So if I wanted gym shoes, I'd wear gym shoes. So that is an example of a low quality kudu suede, but high quality kudu suedes exist as well. And here's a pair um, that has a combination of this hatch grain, which is just calf, and this is kudu suede on the top. Now you can see, this is a couple layers thick, you can see them um, sewn together. And this is from Blazing Wonders um, out of China, um, who did a really nice job building this in to these boots. So um, you can see the pile um, is holding up very, very much like the the um, uh, the kid suede from St. Crispin's. And while this is not quite at St. Crispin's standard, uh, it is a very, very high-end shoe uh, in the overall scheme of things. Now, when it comes to Nubuck, you have a lot of different things that you can look at when it comes to it. And here is a pair of Nubuck. And if you look carefully, you can see the, the actual underlying skin pattern, but it also has a suede-like finish to it. Um, now this is actually elephant and um, has a, a really interesting way to it, but not all Nubuck is quite like that. Here is a pair of Nubuck in moose. So this is from Petra and Claymore. Um, this pair is from Parkhurst. And um, it has a, a Petro and Claymore belt in it, which we'll get into a little bit later. But the moose skin, um, also new book, doesn't require a lot of polish, but uh, the moose is um, very soft. This has a piece that's unlined, which you can see in the tongue, and uh, very, very durable leather. Now, these sneakers are in elk skin. So another natural texture and also in a Nubuck finish. Again, no shining required, uh, just a little bit of conditioner from time to time. Not a lot, a little bit. Now this is also very similar to Nubuck and this is American Buffalo. And in this case, you can see if I hold it far away, there is a pattern underlying in, in spite of the dots and the dots themselves or because this was um, milled down to show this natural pattern in the leather, right? Now this is a Francis Wapplinger, 
and um, is more like a bespoke quality. You can see that it's actually in Adelaide, but it's very well hidden in the pattern of the shoe. Now, this is another pair that's also in a very Nubuck-like finish, um, although this does have some polish on it. And this is in Pacquery from South America. This is from Chao Torres or Maestro in Brazil. And uh, again, if you look closely, you can see how this has a very interesting, very unique grain to it. Now this is similar to pigskin, but just slightly different. So those are the Nubuck and Suede. When we get into the rest, you get into your more traditional leathers. Now this is, and it needs a good polish, but this is bison, right? In one type of uh, pattern. Now you'll notice that the texture on bison is going to change significantly based on where on the animal it's from. So that is bison uh, from one part of the animal. This is bison from another. And this is a really big piece because these are PTBs, right? So not as, as cut up. And this is a seamless hole cut from yet another piece of bison. Now, some of it may be shrunken, some of it may, is just tanned differently, but there's also the parts of the bison that are different as you're looking at it. So that's just part of the, the fun. Now, there's also kudu. Um, now, we looked at kudu as a suede, but let's look at kudu as a leather. This is what they like to call Jamaican kudu. It's a really nice kind of chestnut color to it. And you can see it has a really interesting um, texture. Now, the texture in this is not rough to the touch. It's pretty smooth. But if you look at Peabody Kudu, which is the vamp here, it's a lot rougher. And this they call this antiqued, um, and many people refer to it as shrunken. This is a Mecariello uh, in this Kudu, and this is Sons of Henry. Now, this is a very interesting piece of Kudu that is from Ichigo Ichii in Japan. And this has a very different texture to it again, All right? So the tanning can change the texture considerably depending on what you're looking for. Now, close to Kudu is deer skin. And this is a deer skin. And you have to look really carefully to see the texture that's built into these. Now, this is new, I haven't worn these yet but another really interesting texture, kind of barely a texture, sitting there. Now, we have some others here that I wanna point out. Um, we have kangaroo. Kangaroo, very little in the way of texture. Now this is a very thin leather, but incredibly strong. And just a, a nice, fun leather to wear. Um, probably wondering about the wallet. This is shark skin. And so as you think about this, it is commonly used in shoes, but this is a very deep texture to it and would be incredibly deep throughout the shoe. So something to consider. Now, as we're looking at it, there's also pigskin. And here is a pigskin piece on top of a regular calf. And you can see the pattern there. But then you also have another shoe, which is this one here, which is like a wild boar. So very similar to pigskin, very similar to peccary, which is a t looks like a pig, right? But if we look closely, the pattern in the leather is slightly different. So, and this is tanned differently. This is a Macariello, and he actually has a special tanning process that he puts this through. But for keeping this straight in my head, I just tend to call this wild boar, where this I know is peccary from Brazil, uh, mostly because the shoemaker 
it's from Brazil, and he told me it's from Brazil. So uh, where Macariello hasn't been able to identify where the leather in this one is from. So still a beautiful shoe, absolutely gorgeous in so many ways. Um, very nice sole. Um, the, the workmanship on all of these shoes is incredible. And, um, you know, not, not something uh, that I take for granted. Now, a lot of people, when they think of um, exotics, are really focused on this. And this is alligator. And this is a really nice, this is from Petra and Claymore. And um, they actually gifted me this belt. And it's just an incredible piece of alligator. Now, alligator scan comes in, in many levels of quality. And, and this one is a high quality and just a, a really nice um, texture to have as well. Now, I don't have shoes in any type, anything that swims. So, um, you know, for, for the main part of there, obviously most of the animals swim, but um, the shark skin accessory and the, uh, the alligator belt are really to try them out. Now, I'm gonna close today with one of the perhaps most unique. Now this is a water buffalo. So as you'd expect, water buffalo is going to share a lot in common with bison. What I like about this one, and this is a St. Crispin's, is that you can see the pattern actually evolve on the shoe. And on this part, it's much, much bigger on the inside and it's much smaller on the outside of the shoe and on the apron. So really interesting work. And you'll see that a lot with alligator where they use, um, you know, the, the really fine grains in, in the aprons and then they use big grains in the vamp of the shoe. Just something to, uh, to think about as you're looking at your next pair. So that is exotic leathers. I'm interested in your feedback and what you think of the exotic leathers that you have in your collection and what you like best about them all. Thanks.